Well, that was great hanging out with Heidi. I swear, I don't know if I got a hot flash or what. I got so hot and then I got so sleepy. <laughs> I was just like, <gasps> and then now I'm, I'm back. I'm like, okay, my energy's back up now. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Is my afternoon hot flash or something? I don't know. I don't know if I'm the right age for all that, Terry. You get sick. <laughs> you had a lot of sleep last night, didn't you? No. <laughs> Um, no. Oh, you're so, right. Of course, you got I your second this. wind, right? You're right. And then mm-hmm. I still did get up around, yeah, between eight or nine. Yeah. yeah. Which sounds late to some people, eight or nine. But if you go to sleep, if some, if you're looking at your phone at four forty-four a.m., no, that's not a lot of sleep. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have any more thoughts on that? Um, on 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 that. I mean, you, Jonathan. At the mm-hmm. time, at the current moment, you don't have any yes. kids. Okay. I'm gonna keep. And I was playing. I'm gonna keep sending my energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see you with a little girl, a little beautiful little girl one day, and you doting on this beautiful little girl. But you're this person I know that just loves kids. Kids love you, and they're, you know, but, and and then you still just have the heart of a child, and and so I know you have witness of your own siblings' children. Mm-hmm. And when you think about what Heidi's talking about, I mean, how does what does this how does it resonate with you? You know, thank you for all that. Um, so it resonates that it's it's really it for me and the connection to that light of the child that child. They're all natural little healers. This is the thing, and this is why it it. it they're here to also reflect and, and help the parents to become more mindful. Um, and, you know, to see, you know, my nieces grow up and, you know, our family has histories of anxiety and, and, um, and a lot of them don't know that. I mean, it ripples throughout our, like each segregation of our family, like our brother, my brother, my sister, and, you know, my cousins, so to really see that there's this new way of uh, of presenting and really connecting to what is true to them, their heart, and what their 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 passion is, um, it's really it's really inspiring. And you know to just to observe, you know, a little child out in nature. This was my my experience when I first moved down here. It was like this little child. She was like she was maybe two and a half. She's out with her parents and out at the trail over at the lake. And she was just loving the nature. Look, picking up rocks and just looking at the rocks. And like, oh, no, not that one. And, you know, she comes, I come walking down and she looks at me and she picks, she goes and picks up a specific, specific rock. And this rock it fit my hand that I, I do my axiotonal alignment modality, like the, the way I hold my hand to channel the energy, it fit perfectly within my hand, within my fingers. And, and it just flawlessly, and she knew exactly what she did. So I checked, I went and got a rock for her and I, I traded it for her and said, thank you. And she looked and she smiled, she was so happy. But it's just to really be able to, to connect with those with children and that soul, the purity of their soul. This is why I, I came in my question and and the energy kind of spiked and everything flatlined on her of when she was trying to answer it about kids remembering of of the other wisdom of their other lives, right? Of that soul. Um, and how they had a safe space to be able to discuss or to put that onto paper. Um, so it really, it really is exciting. And I, I see that, you know, it's kind of like what we're doing to create that is we have to have our team to create a foundation and to then have the ones that bring in the information and another one that the other one that has that connection that just connects with every that can connect to people and the network and everything and really allow things to evolve. I mean, and this is, we always have a a box, like we were talking about, of a, a group or of a team that comes together. We only necessarily 
could do certain things, but necessarily we can, we're going to be presented with touching all brackets, all levels of, of, you know, babies, children, teenagers, adolescents, adults, as it all resonates, we just have to, it's just the remembrance that the children are trying to allow us to remember within our adult form. Terry, I know you understand that resonance right there when it comes to the children knowing and having memories. It's actually kicking me in to think about, because sometimes we will think, right, as, in my adult life, I can think about the dreams I used to have and the things I used to say. Not now, now I'm like, oh, wait a minute, from my child perspective, yeah, that was me observing and knowing and coming in with knowing. And I do remember my family listening to me being, you know, being very intent when, especially when something paranormal was happening around the house, like she said she saw X, Y, Z. And it, now you're in the center of the room and everybody's like, well, what did you see? Tell us, <laughs> you know, like they're waiting for the answers because because they're getting like miffed by what is going on and they're look, looking at me. And then, you know, my little memories of flying and the the mark on my foot. And now I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I never felt, it's funny because I'll tell people about this, but I'm not thinking about what she was saying, how the little girl said, oh, I saw it on Jupiter or, or just what you're saying. Like, oh, that's me bringing across information. I never, I don't know. I don't know how I was observing it, but not making the connection of just exactly what you're saying. It's so weird that I'm like, oh, I was bringing it across. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay. It, you know, you probably have your own dreams because you're not thinking that because you're thinking about other children. You're probably not thinking about the memories that you have that. Right. Wait a minute. This was Jonathan when he was doing it. Mm -hmm. You were actually bringing it across. Mm -hmm. So I know whenever I hear stories about kids saying, hey, mom, I picked you from the mommy store or I waited for you, but you kept waiting so long. But I was waiting to come here. You know, different stories I've heard about women who've had abortions or miscarriages and their kids are saying, I waited, I was waiting for you. But so that just leads me to Terry, if you want to speak about that. Well, <laughs> I, I'm going to just uh, stray a little bit because, um, you know, my daughters were 10 years apart. But my daughter, when she was about seven, eight, she said to me, my, my first daughter, she says, mommy, I want you to have, I want you to have a baby sister because I don't want you to be by yourself. <laughs> and she was very insistent on it. And so, yeah, you know, then my daughter was born, you know, so she, Melanie would have been 10 years old. And then, um, Years later, <laughs> Melanie died when she was 18. Um, and it was her way of sort of saying that, yes, this is, you have to have a child. And there was um, the connection that the two of them had was beyond the veil. That's how I'll put it, because they, um, they were so similar in a lot of ways. So it was like her older sister sent her in to be at this time. And, you know, just all through that, that time, through that pregnancy, I knew that I was having a girl and she said, my name is Rachel. <laughs> and it was like, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That was who she was. And she, so she came in knowing who she was. Um, and it was just, it was very interesting because she, uh, we lived in, in uh, we lived overseas for a while, but she had all kinds of visions and dreams and stuff. And um, I wasn't fully awake to a lot of the stuff, but, you know, in retrospect, I realized that she was probably being visited by, by ghosts or spirits or whatever, mm -hmm. and they really frightened her. So um, there was, there was that sense of, being aware that your child is going through something traumatic and how do I deal with it because I wasn't seeing it but it wasn't that I didn't believe her it's so you know 
what do you, how do you deal with it? And so you become very open and you become very, you, you trust what they're saying. You know, you don't doubt them. Oh, you're making that up. No, there wasn't, there wasn't anything like that. There was a, a, a real fear there. So whatever she was witnessing, whatever she was seeing was very evident to her. I didn't see it, but I, you know, I trusted her and uh, just let her, uh, you know, so it is as a parent, you, you do, you, you, you get to realize that, yeah, I don't care what the system says. My child is having an experience. And so I am, that child is part of me as well. So I'm experiencing it through them. And so even though I may not experience it the same way, I'm still having a, uh, an experience here. So how do I deal with it to help them deal with it as well? You know, we went to Disney on that day and Tyler was saying random words just out of the blue. And of course we went there to do energy work, but, and when I repeated it and I would be like, did you hear what he said? He'd be like, mom, like he didn't, but I, he didn't realize like, no, I was like, do you not understand? Like you're a receptor, like an antenna. You wouldn't have just said those string of words if it came out of the ether for you that you just, he just yeah. put it out. It was something about, um, doom or destruction, something of destruction, he said. I wish I could remember it off the rip, but I was like, whoa, because we could feel our foreheads fluttering and we could feel the gravity pulling our bodies down. And it was, I was like, what kind of place is this that I feel like, <gasps> like, um, I felt as if I was just being sucked down energy wise. And I was thinking, how is this legal? <laughs> Like what, what kind of what kind of facility is this? Where where are we? But uh, yeah, he would just say these random things. But a lot of things he he holds back. I I was a lot more verbal of, oh yeah, I used to be able to fly, you know. But he he doesn't really have that forthcoming. Um, but he's a bit more cynical, even with his own thoughts. He's very cynical. But I think we've learn to be cynical with the kids like ah, they're just kids and it's like no they're the most valuable little antennas you better pay attention to what they're saying mm -hmm. I think it's really really important you know it even goes back to when when kids didn't want to hug people and they said no just hug them that's so and so they give them a kiss and they're like no why why do they have an affinity or an aversion to certain people some people they go to and, you know, and some people, they don't want to go near. And sometimes we get to ignoring them. Even with the foods that they want to eat, they don't want to eat. Some kids don't want to touch meat. I never saw a problem with, if my kid wants to go to bed after eating a bowl of strawberries versus a piece of chicken, I'm good. You know, stop kind of forcing them to do certain things, but just kind of observe and at least ask them why. And try to understand what it is because you know they they have a knowing, right? Just ask with the kinesiology. Yes, ask the questions, not being short about what you're trying, what they're trying, you're trying to get them to do or eat food. It's like, okay, why don't you want to eat that? You know, and when and they say well, there are monsters under their bed, how? there probably are monsters under yeah. their bed. And if they don't want to hunt the auntie or or that uncles because maybe there's that inter energy that is tethered to them, right? Like, and it's like she was saying, it was like, you know, she was inviting all of that into her space when she was drinking, et cetera. How much is that? Like how many layers of that is around, you know, the populace, right? So it's, it's really, yeah, it's taking things like that. What the children say to, to, to truth and heart, right? No, giving that power back to them, not stealing the power. Oh, they don't want to hug him. Okay, don't have to hug them. You know, you know, really honoring. Them. So here it is. We watched Matthew John last night, and he said that the shadow is the inner child's 
right? The inner child, once that inner child is damaged, it later on becomes the shadow. So we want as little shadow as possible. <laughs> we don't need, we, we don't want to destroy the inner child, but to actually allow that inner child to be sovereign, because this is what we're trying to learn about ourselves. Yeah. What is our inner child lacking? Where are the bruises? Where, where is the pain so that we can fix the inner child? Like, can you imagine if we just allowed the inner child to keep living without trying to smother it and destroy it? Because I think, you know, the way we're growing up or the way we've been growing up is determined to let's snuff that thing out and kill it. You need to grow up. You need to learn to be like everybody else. Make yourself fit in. Um, You know, stop your crying, right? You can't cry. So you choke off expressing your pain. Nobody has time for this. You know, it's just, I just think of all the things that are said to just choke that little kid up and lock him in the closet. And and it's creating so much damage. Mm -hmm. I was, um, yeah, it, and it's taking those little cues and that, the the being open to find that that ability to ground and love that inner child again. It was like that situation that I had yesterday um, with the caterpillar. It turned out to being that person when she was a child. She would. She collected caterpillars and made a cat like a caterpillar cardboard fort in the cement basement. And she allowed, she created a, a town and everything for them. And she would be, she created a song with the scent for the caterpillars and just had, had an amazing moment with the caterpillars. And she, she created a song and she, she sung that song about caterpillars and butterflies to her children as they grew up. So it's like, there's so many little synchronicities. It's like even just, you you open yourself up and and to connect to to, to your heart, right? And to those those souls around you, that is part of your, like we were talking about soul group, that will kind of open and ignite that. And it's just, you know, honoring the space between between each other's journeys right so i was like i i I learned that after i told you guys that i'm like wow this is i uh yeah it was pretty interesting um and yeah the child's always trying to talk to us right right you know someone told me this exercise right with your, your your dominant hand will be the adult and take the other hand and allow that one to write so that the inner child can speak. I know you have some exercises on the inner child, don't you, Terry? Um, was that one of them or? Um, yeah, that was one that you could do, not only writing, but doing things just with your with your non-dominant hand. Mm-hmm. You know, spend the day using the non-dominant hand, you know? <laughs> put, put your dominant hand in, and because then you're, cre- you're opening that pathway to the creative brain and that's where, and the, and the subconscious, and that's where the inner child is, is waiting to come out. Mm-hmm. Just saying that stimulated like a, some of the brain yeah. right there. I was like, oh, feeling some yeah. fuzzy there. Did you have any, anything to add to that, Jonathan? Like how to actually approach and bring out that inner child? Cause we've, we've done some meditations on it. You can check it out. And um, yeah, the divine inner child and the inner child and discussing also too with the vision board with the inner child. But what, do you have any other? I think like in mine is, is, is kind of recalling a memory that, you know, that re- that brought you that, that joy within that your childhood that really sung and spoke out to you and and you were just in the greatest blissful moment right and so I, I say that's and a lot of that can come back to to ground you to what your call what your calling is is what your 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 mission is necessarily here as you resonate within that memory or it, it's a path 
to allow you to move forward to heal and find out why and how and where things happened and what and it's just really to to yeah to root and out, connect with breathing within that within that space feel, remembering feeling using your senses what it's what it usually smelled like what is your what did it were you outside in nature by pine trees or did your mom have certain cooking being made at that time um you know what was the texture of the the item that you're playing with or or the trees or the grass underneath your feet and really find places and just re, you know go in those moments and be that little child in the grass go stand in the dirt or exactly like what they're doing at that school like go put your feet in the dirt and be mindful and have that intention and yes you, you can use the opposite hands to to also boost it but it's to really take those intentional breaths into your heart space and to really allow it to be in that moment right so in in my oil ceremonies mm -hmm. it just brought me to the sacral space where we use um let's see the musk oil with the carnation ball and so you cover the sacral area and it and the affirmation that we use is my energetic space is safe and secure I can unleash my shakti without guilt life is pleasurable and I deserve to have pleasure in my life and so that's a part one part of it but in the root chakra one of the affirmations is it is safe for me to be in physical form mother earth supports me and meets my needs my body is wise and worthy of love. I love my body and trust its wisdom. It is safe for me to have my needs met. Abundance is everywhere and I am allowed to be cared for. So mm -hmm. I know the inner child is also gonna be in your heart, but those two spaces, for some reason, I, I have the feeling like it was like, oh, it feels so good. <laughs> like just to say that out loud to like be able to relax and let your inner child be rested and comfortable in your space. Cause all the different parts of us, our ego, our inner child and our shadow, instead of being quieted and, and suppressed, they need to feel safe inside of us. And we need to allow ourselves to have the feelings of pleasure, joy, excitement. I remember just playing with beetles. And when you talked about that little girl in that rock, oh my God, w weren't we just the most little scientists? We were just out yep. in the grass and the dirt and we were like, oh my God, look what happens when you mix water and dirt and it turns into mud and oh my God. And then you leave it somewhere and the next day it dries up and you're like, oh, look what happened. It dried and it, it shape, took the shape. And, like everything was so dang exciting, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I used to do something really weird. I would mix ink, talc powder, alcohol peroxide and I'd be like boom and then the next morning I wake up and it turned into some type of jelly I was just like oh wow <laughs> I guess it's just my mom was like if you don't stop I'm gonna kill you let me get you a little science set so that you can stop tearing up these ink pens so <laughs> but yeah I wanted to collect butterflies I remember taking fruit off the tree and stirring it up I'm sure that I made liquor in my closet because I would mix these little <laughs> fruit in the in, so, in a container and put it in the bottom of my closet and like let it I was like I'm making I'm thinking I'm making juice I don't know I probably made some kind of passion I can, I can remember my mother telling me about how they were they thought they were going to make alcohol so they took some blueberries and they mixed it with some sugar and water and they put it out uh, in the field and they hid it and the next day they went out and they drank it. And my mother said they got so drunk from that. Wow. <laughs> See, it's, it's just by nature, we're just making liquor. We're booze. 
my nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, she said it was her, her and her sister, so they were maybe eight years old. But she said, we thought that we had made this and we got so drunk on it, but it was <laughs> the, the whole idea. And, and it, she said, I don't even know. She said, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was in the morning and it was the afternoon, but she said it was, you know, she said, well, you, you know, when she would think about it, she said it was so funny as kids doing that. It had fermented, it had been <laughs> <laughs> whole time get, get, get in, in less than in, in 12 hours right <laughs> yeah you were professional bootleggers you were part of the kennedy family already <laughs> kool-aid drunk all that sugar <laughs> oh gosh i feel like i still remember it so that's why i can have compassion for my son because i remember mm. i remember I, you know what i just want i, I just want to say this is that when we think about our chakras, we think, oh, well, this is where this resides. This is where this resides. It resides in all of in us. In all of it. It, it. it is just it is just sort of that symbolic place that we can acknowledge it. But yeah, the inner child does, you know, we can look at it here, we can access it here. But it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's in this, it, it's, yeah, it's here. Wouldn't it be the one that was the closest to the source, right? Because it was yeah. the most undamaged and most connected. It's, but the it's, heart is it's, the first thing that's created. It's all of us. It's, it's just, yes. you know, it's those Ooh. different layers. I like that, Jonathan. You said the heart is the first thing that's created? Yeah. That is the first thing that's created. And it that's why there's the mind that's cells the within mind. our heart, right? This is why we say we need to more access the mind within the heart to think first and then go up to think the mind. Think with your heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was so relaxing, though, that oh, I feel safe. Just saying that for yourself, I feel safe. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll end that segment. Pretty cool. Oh, wait a minute. We well, didn't, you know, you got to remember to smash the like and subscribe, right? right? Like and subscribe, yes. In the notes, in the, in the, um, comment section or in the description section you'll see the links to our telegram and our link tree so if you want to get in contact with us i do vision board classes i do theta healing and business coaching even oil anointing ceremonies jonathan and terry they do so many things they close portals because we talked about you know, Heidi talked about some of the portals that kind of affected her and her kids, closing up portals, accidental alignment, um, Akashic records with Terry. I've experienced that. Many people have experienced it. It's the least painful journey that I've ever had because, you know, she makes sure that you're in a safe space and safe zone and you're always protected and you're above your emotions. So I think that's a thing a lot of people don't know about when they're dragging you through your past memories. Those things can be very painful, you know, past lives or childhood stuff that can uh, get you trapped in the, the muck of the emotions. But rather than doing that, she takes you above it. And I can tell you, it was a very pleasant experience. So anything else you guys wanted to say, but you know, besides the fact that if any of this information is useful, please tell us in the comments what it's all about, what, what you like, what you didn't like, or what you would like to see. Also to share it with other people because people need this and we're just, you know, we're not trying to channel aliens and get all extravagant. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to be the best humans we can and learn how to treat one another, but learn how to uh, survive on this planet, but not just survive, but to flourish and move into our talents and have the a, a journey that is graceful, loving, and full of ease, putting ourselves on the greatest joy timeline. Exactly. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And we are, we are foundations for the future. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to build our future? What we're children's future? We have to be that foundation. So mm -hmm. You know, we do it out of love. We do it out of grace. We do it out of joy. That's how we, that's what we want to build the future with. We need to stir the pot to allow it to flow, to create, make 
the people that are on the fence with this information, but it's just, it's wedging the door open and then maybe two weeks, month, maybe tomorrow they have that, that aha or that synchronicity within their That's right. Right. As the waves come, people will keep yeah. going in the waves. Keep We're here. The waves. We are all here too. That's just, right. Mm-hmm. Somebody waited on us. Mm-hmm. Someone waited on you and somebody waited on them. So, right. you know, it's awesome. I'm going to end it here. Namaste. Namaste.